May the God who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. Good morning. Today my visit is with Christ Church in Cranbrook, where they are celebrating the month of pride, and I'll be doing many, many confirmations. And so my sermon is informed by that context. Here is a man with a withered hand. Here is a man who needs help and healing. And here are the ones who stand on the side, who watch and wait. What will he do? Will the young man from Galilee, who has crowds following him, the peasant from the tiny town of Nazareth, will he cure this man? There are laws and customs, rules and commands. Will this one, who is attracting crowds, unsettling the accepted ways of believing and acting, what will he do? do. They watch, they wait to see. Right, wrong, in or out, included and beloved, excluded and ignored, cast out and vilified. It mattered then and it matters now. If we are 14, 43, or 84, who's in, who's out, and who decides who counts, it's still a way in which our worlds are ordered. And Jesus, over and over again, looks at the ones who revere custom and history more than humanity and care, and he shows a different way. Be you, says Jesus, be your authentic self. And to the community, he courageously says, care, welcome for all. And today we mark the beginning of the month of pride, pride for people made in God's image and likeness who happen to be LGBTQIA plus queer. On some level, as an out lesbian, married for as long as it has been legal in this country, and partnered for 37 years to the Reverend Dr. M. Susan Harlow. I am stunned to be a bishop. In my world, when I was growing up, if I ever told anyone that I thought I was a lesbian, I was convinced, and I probably wasn't wrong, that I would be shunned and scorned. When I was 16, I had an experience on a retreat of being completely and utterly loved by God in the person of Jesus Christ, and that experience changed everything for me. I knew that God loves me. The rest of the world was probably still up for grabs, and yet, here we all are, celebrating pride and rejoicing in the people today who have decided to be confirmed, received, or publicly reaffirm their baptismal vows to events that are not at all incongruous or disconnected. And some in our world would say, you cannot be queer and be Christian. To which I say, Look at the words and the actions of Jesus Christ. He says nothing about homosexuality. And what he does do 
is to welcome all people and continually advocate for right relationships which enable all of us to be our most authentic, courageous, welcoming selves. And this is what I long for, for all of us gathered today, those of us who are making public professions of faith, and those of us who are supporting and witnessing these vows, and those of us who are celebrating pride with grounded, gracious admiration and love. This is what I'm looking for, that acceptance, that care. And the reality is, is that I am in awe of all of you here today. In the midst of all that is going on in our world, here you are saying, in spite of, or maybe even perhaps because of the chaos of the world and the anxiety of our lives, you are here today making a public profession of faith of how you want to be, how you long to be in the world. And I hope that you will experience today as a moment along your journey of faith where you considered risking embodying the charisms of Jesus Christ. A specific time when you said, what the heck, I'm going to try to do my best to imitate Jesus. And I believe Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, exuded authenticity, courage, and openness to all. And I believe it is these three characteristics that he longs for his followers to embody. Authenticity, courage, and openness and welcome to all. He is authentic. He never pretends to be anything or anyone other than who he is. Remember in the Gospels when Jesus is talking about his death, how he will suffer and be killed, and Peter kind of pulls him aside and says, whoa, 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 whoa. He tries to give him a little PR assistance. Peter says, uh, um, Lord, um, I don't think you should keep saying that because you're scaring the people. And Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Or the time when Jesus walks into the temple and sees the people selling animals that folks might buy and use to sacrifice to God, and he just gets so peeved that he kind of loses himself, and he starts flipping table and flinging coins and yelling at the people who are selling, you will not make my father's house of prayer into a marketplace. Or on the night before he dies in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus knowing what is likely to happen and being scared of death or scared to death. He prays so hard that his sweat turns to blood. Oh, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Not my will, but your will be done. So prayerfully and fervently that his sweat bleeds. Jesus is real. He does not stand on ceremony, he doesn't hide his displeasure, and he names and he faces his fear. Jesus, though he is the Son of God, or in spite of being the Son of God, Jesus is completely and utterly real, and rarely did people have to ask, gosh, I wonder what Jesus is thinking. Authenticity. Authenticity and courage. Jesus is courageous. The story in Luke's Gospel of Jesus when he's still a child and his family goes to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover and after their time in the big city, Jesus' family begins their return trip home and after a few days they notice that Jesus isn't with them. Now to be fair, I don't think this makes Mary and Joseph the world's worst parents. I mean, it was just that Families in those days would have traveled in large extended units and the kids would have run back and forth between various groups of relatives and so it is possible to be decent parents and to take three days to realize that your child is gone when you thought he was probably with the grandparents for the last two days. But when Mary and Joseph do return to Jerusalem and they find Jesus there, with the scholars and the priests talking about scripture and theology, I'm going to say, even if you are the Son of God, it takes a fair amount of chutzpah 
to engage adults in serious religious conversation. And remember, too, the manner in which Jesus continually put himself in harm's way over and over again, going to the temple to teach and pray, publicly calling out the scribes and the Pharisees for acquiescing to Rome, or even as he is arrested and standing tall before Pilate, living into his call, knowing the pain that is likely to follow if he is found guilty, inciting the people over and over again. He moves forward to his fate instead of quietly sliding away from the people in the spotlight. And then there is that raw, brutal courage on the cross. Courage. And in the midst of it, throughout his life, Jesus offers a profound welcome to all, ignoring, breaking, sidestepping the norms and stipulations of the day, eating with Zacchaeus, the despised tax collector, whom all shun, mostly because he was always trying to shake them down for money, or chatting with the Samaritan woman at the well, who by all accounts had four husbands and a boyfriend, a pious Jewish man would never have been caught in the com company of a Samaritan woman with that sort of history, yet there he is. And she becomes one of the first to announce him as the Messiah. He told me everything I have ever done. Could he be the Messiah? Or when he's coming to the aid of the woman accused of adultery, and where was the man, by the way? Have you ever noticed? I mean, adultery actually has to happen with two people, but, but there he is questioning the man who were there to stone her, wondering aloud if the one who was without sin should perhaps throw the first stone, all the while drawing literal and metaphorical lines in the sand, and eventually looking up from his work to see that only he and she remain, and then asking her, so where are they who have accused you? And she looks around and states the obvious, they're all gone. Well then, he says, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Over and over and over again, Jesus of Nazareth offered a full and complete welcome to all, authenticity, courage and welcome for all this then is what jesus of nazareth embodies and we who want to be we who long to be his followers this too is how we are called to be and do you think we can pull it off to which i say well even a broken clock is right twice a day which is to say i think by ourselves on our own we can every once in a while do it for sure but to really do it to truly be authentic, courageous, and utterly welcoming. I think we need each other. For try as we might, we are not the Son of God, but with each other in a community of faith, in a community of communities of faith, we can together help each other along and call each other into our very best selves. Together we are saying we long to be like Jesus, straight and queer, together with pride. We can make this longing tangible and real. And when we do, the chaos and fear and anxiety that seems to fuel our world will begin to dissipate and be set aside as we live into God's hope and God's call for all of us together. This is my hope, and this is my longing, and this is my prayer for us today. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always.
Amen.